Bradley, where are you going in such a hurry? Did you remember something? Perhaps you've been to the supermarket that's just near our home? Huh? What supermarket? We are going to the movie theater today, aren't we? Has the movie started or are we already late? Can you still watch the movie at this point? As if nothing's happened? You are still in the mood, aren't you? Huh? I'm lost here. What are you talking about? Who wants to go to the movies with you, huh? Why would I want to sit in a dark room and watch a film with you? Go by yourself, Reagan. I'm not coming. What the hell are you talking about? What do you mean? You can't say that. Why did you change your mind so quickly? What do you mean? You are such a horrible wife. How dare you look down on your husband? What are you even saying? I don't understand what's happening. You're clearly just a housewife using my money. You're just leaving off my hard work. You dare to look down on your great husband? And you think you have the right to join me for a movie night? Hold on a second. Oh, really? I don't know. I despise you? When did I ever say that? I can't recall doing anything to upset you this much. You didn't make my morning coffee today, did you? Coffee, Reagan. Coffee. It's the one thing I look forward to each day. All I want is just iced coffee. You've been my wife for 10 years. You must know this. Know what, huh? The coffee is the reason you left the house, isn't it? You better watch your tone before you regret it. Don't you know how serious a mistake you've made? Excuse me? You are a housewife. Ruin your husband's morning routine. Do you know how serious it is? Are you saying missing out on your morning coffee is some kind of cardinal sin? I brought it up this morning, didn't I? And here you are, arguing with me? You said if you want me to make your coffee, just bring the pot. I asked for coffee, and you should know what you have to do. And don't ask your husband to take the bottle. I'm swamped with repairing breakfast for the whole family every morning. I asked you for one small favor. The pot was soaking from the day before. I couldn't use it right away. I just needed you to grab another one from the cupboard. It's not about soaking pots. It's about helping out a little, maybe even loading the dishwasher once you're done. You're the homemaker. It's your job to manage these things. I manage the house, yes, but I also work just as many hours as you do. If you see that the amount of money I give you is decreasing day by day, then you better take the initiative and make your own money. This is a wife's responsibility. Huh? What? Oh, Reagan, look at yourself. I implore you to take a long, hard look at yourself and the path that you're on. I unleashed my wrath upon you with such fervor and intensity that you still haven't had an apology to me until now. What? I have to apologize for this? Are you serious, Bradley? Think about it, and you will know the answer is yes. Forget it. I shall not return until you're deeply pondered upon this matter. Just think it through thoroughly. And then when you think it's done, just call me. Come on, Bradley. I've put the divorce agreement on the table. If you've got nothing else to defend, just put your signature in the divorce papers. What? Have you carefully prepared the divorce agreement this time? How many times have we been through this? Every time we fight, you just come back to your hometown and even prepare divorce papers. Enough! This is all on you. Before you dare to criticize me, take a good hard look at yourself. After some self-reflection, you owe me an apology. Until then, don't expect me back. Reagan, are you irritating Bradley again? Sunday dawned when he appeared at my door in the countryside. He was angry, pacing back and forth like a caged animal. He really went back to his hometown every time? I'm really sorry. It's just that our arguments seem to push him away and I don't know how to stop this cycle. Really? It seems every time my doorbell rings, it's a signal for you to reflect on your actions. It's like a broken record, repeating over and over. I'm really sorry, Mom. If it happens again, do you think I could 
perhaps consider a divorce? It's a drastic step, but I feel like we're at a dead end. What? Excuse me? What on earth are you saying? What sort of madness do you speak of? Divorce is not a word to be thrown around lightly, Reagan. It's just that because every time he quarreled with me, he just ran back to his hometown. The result is that we can't just have a normal conversation. Therefore, the same thing will happen soon. I think the problem here is that the place that he goes, wherever we quarrel, it's like he's running away from our problems. You mean even if my son goes home, I shouldn't let him in? That's a harsh thing to ask of a mother, Reagan. That's right. I also want to ask you to help. It's not to punish him, but maybe to break this pattern we're stuck in. Who will help you do such a thing? I think you'll say something as a result. I was told to ignore my son and you will ask for help. Reagan. unexpectedly, you are such a stubborn daughter-in-law. You're asking me to choose sides. And that's not fair. Huh? I'm not trying to be stubborn, Vanessa. I'm just at my wit's end. I also heard the reason why you and Bradley yell at each other. Did you forget to make my son's favorite coffee? It seems like such a small thing to cause such a big rift. But actually, I've never said that I didn't want to make him a drink. He did not explain it clearly to me, even angry because I did not help him to make the coffee. It's a misunderstanding that blew out of proportion. Wow. I never would have thought that I had such a saucy daughter-in-law like you. At this time, you should be honest. You must feel guilty for your husband. You should apologize for your mistake. I don't understand why my son wants to marry you. It's like you're both speaking different languages. Um, is this really all my fault? I feel like we're both to blame, but it's always me who has to say sorry. Yes, of course. The responsibility of the homemaker is to build a cozy home for her husband. I want you to understand that this is all your fault. You didn't do the thing you needed to do. If you apologize, he'll forgive you and come back home. That's how generous my son is. But it seems like you're both stuck in a loop. So I have to apologize again for the unreasonable matter? It feels like I'm always the one bending over backward. What are you talking about? Unreasonable matter? Judging by your attitude, you are not a self-reflecting at all in this case. It seems all you need is a need to kneel before him. Yes, you must kneel down. You come to my house and kneel before my son. If not, you'll be a bastard. My family wouldn't easily forget what you have done. It's about showing some humility. It's just a cup of coffee and you make me kneel for this? This is too difficult to understand, Mom. All you want to see is just me being tortured, right? It's not about the coffee. It's about respect. And what kind of tone is that? Thank you for using this method to reconcile with my son. How dare you speak so rudely with your mother-in-law? You're such an awful daughter-in-law. You're not making this any easier. How did my mother-in-law make me kneel down? I can't take it anymore. This is too much for me. I'm trying to find a solution, not create more drama. Is this all you want to say? You not only argue back with your husband, but also to your mother-in-law? It seems that we have to take out the ultimate weapon here. It's time for some tough love. Huh? The ultimate weapon? What more can you possibly do? After hearing our conversation, your father-in-law said that he wants to tell you something. He said he would directly teach you how a husband and wife should behave with each other. If you collapse and cry, it's definitely not my fault. It's all your fault. He's old school, and he believes in setting things straight. Why are you being so stubborn all the time? Not apologizing to me even though my father-in-law taught you a lesson. How could there be a misbehaving woman like you? It's like you're living in your own world, ignoring everyone else's feelings. I do not accept your reason. That's enough. Go home for a week just because of a cup of coffee? You are crazy. You're blowing this way out of proportion, Bradley. It was just a cup of coffee, not a declaration of war. Which point am I crazy? I do this to educate your perverted mind. It's about respect, Reagan. Something you seem to have forgotten along the way. 
Huh? Respect? Is that what you call the charade? Reagan, how long are you going to be like this? How dare you not apologize to your husband? Is saying sorry such a difficult thing to do? Huh? You are so stubborn and unpleasant person. Are you really fine when continuing like this? If I take my stepwife home, don't complain. Do you mean the next wife candidate? The one you keep threatening me with. Go ahead, see if I care. But you don't want everything like this, right? If you divorce me as a husband, you, you are such an insignificant person. You'll have nothing without me. Huh? Insignificant? I've never felt more significant since I decided to stand up for myself. Why? What am I saying is the truth. You can live with your husband's blessing when I divorce you. In this case, you're just an old, unemployed woman. Huh? You are too arrogant, Bradley. And you're wrong, Bradley. I'm not old, unemployed, or in need of anyone's blessing. But you don't want everything to become like this, right? Now, come here and apologize to me. If you're abandoned by me, you will feel very troublesome. You just say the magical words, sorry, and everything will be normal again. Where did you say you want to go back to? Your fantasy land where everyone bows down to you? Huh? I have quietly listened to you until now. You just talk about going home. It's really annoying. Where do you think you can go? You've burned all your bridges, Bradley. What? What the hell are you saying? Are you mocking me now? Sorry, but I'm serious. There is no place for you to go. You don't want to go back to my mother's womb, right? Huh? Excuse me? What the hell are you saying? I have submitted a divorce agreement. Household registration has also received favorable documents. After that, I also moved out of that house immediately. Bradley, you have no place to go. What? Have you delivered a divorce application? Without even discussing it with me? Yes, I have. And it's the best decision I've ever made. You moved out of this house? Yes. Um, I left your things in the nearby warehouse, signing a one-month contract. Therefore, you have to take it this month. Hey, just wait a little bit. What the hell is happening? This is madness. I'm telling you that our divorce has been established. I have nothing to do with your wife's replacement. Do whatever you want. That's it. Goodbye. What the hell? Wait a minute. You have to explain clearly what's happening. This is surreal. Huh? What do you mean you've signed a divorce decree? Could it be that the divorce application was on the porch? Did you really hand it over? That's right. When I handed in the household registration and submission, I still felt a bit ashamed because the waiter told me, Ah, so you are his wife monthly. There is a man who comes to get a divorce agreement, which seems very scandalous. They all wondered when will his wife come and apply for a divorce certificate. He told me that everyone was waiting for this day. Well, now the story is also the end. Don't say such a regret. Because the household registration procedure is very fast. There is no way to cancel. That's it. Be careful. You can live in your favorite house in your hometown. <laughs> hey, Reagan. Slowly. Please tell me clearly. Why did you move out? Why now? After all these years? Reagan, I heard that you were divorced without telling my son. What's going on? I've never heard of anyone so selfish before. It's like you've taken the reins without considering anyone else's feelings. How could I be selfish? Is this what your son wants? He said if you do not have a second thought, take the divorce agreement. Then go to the household registration. Bradley told me that. It's not a decision I made lightly. Why don't you have a look at yourself? What happened this time was obviously your fault. Cannot do what your husband offered. It's all your fault. You're always quick to point fingers but slow to see your own mistakes. No, I did nothing wrong. It is just a cup of coffee. As the fool like him, he said the divorce application signed in front of the porch. It's absurd how a small thing can be blown out of proportion. Please do not say that. My boy is not stupid. Please. He may be impulsive, but calling him names won't solve anything. But he is really foolish. <laughs>
It's frustrating when he doesn't see the bigger picture and focuses on trivial matters. There is no daughter-in-law like you. If you don't review what you did without my permission, you'll have to bear the consequences. How can you be so stubborn? Apply for a divorce alone without the consent of your husband? I will never forgive you. It's like you're living in a different world, ignoring our family's values. Well, I didn't go alone. I made my decision with Bradley's consent, but I didn't have to register for the household alone. My father-in-law and I went together. It was a joint decision, not a solo act. Are you talking about my husband? The divorce application was also agreed by your husband. Your family is an eccentric bunch, except your husband. Fortunately, I had my father-in-law by my side, which gave me a feeling of safety. It's not just about signing papers. It's about finding peace. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? You and my husband are together? Why did my husband want to go with you? It's like the world has turned upside down. Yes, he came with me. He also wanted me to write a divorce application. I filed a divorce degree with Bradley. It's not just about ending a marriage. It's about starting a new chapter. What on earth are you saying? Your husband also filed a divorce agreement with you. The same thing is accepted. Congratulations. It's like a storm has fit our family out of nowhere. Wait, wait, wait a little bit. Why? Why did my husband apply for a divorce? This is ridiculous. It's like a bad dream that I can't wake up from. Sorry, but actually very reasonable. He's just too worn out to argue with you. He has tolerated you to this point, hasn't he? Dad came to our house last week. He came to teach me how a husband and wife should resonate with each other. I also think I will learn a lesson about the relationship between Bradley and me. It turns out, not so. Actually, we both are getting to divorce. It's a wake-up call for all of us. What are you talking about? My father-in-law told me that respect is essential in the marriage. If you can't even do this, it is advantageous for both of you to pursue a divorce. Then he said that he also wanted to divorce. So he would go with me to the household registration office because he's also thinking about divorcing you. Your husband said that he and I could come together. I've heard what he said. I'm not aware of whether Bradley has been influenced by you or not. And your husband has endured you more than enough. He no longer wished to live in a living hell on earth with you anymore. It's a revelation that's hard to digest, right? Well, no. You're lying, right? Dad looks very miserable. Bradley is always pampered. And you do not respect your husband. He seems to suffer from the bottom of his heart. It's like the foundation of our family is crumbling. And no, what I say is not just a joke. No, I can't believe this. Is this a lie? It's a question that's been haunting me since I heard the news. We didn't plan for this, being unexpectedly forced to divorce. It's like we've been caught up in a storm without an umbrella. Do you know where your father-in-law is now? I didn't see him this morning. It's like he's vanished into thin air. He must have moved to a new home because he said he found a suitable place to live alone. It's a new chapter for him, I guess. What on earth are you talking about? It's like you're speaking in riddles. Anyway, live happily with your precious son. My father and I will individually live our own lives. It's time for us all to find our own paths. Wait a minute, Reagan. What should I do? It's like the ground has been pulled out from under my feet. Huh? I'm not sure what you're asking me. I'm just kidding. Please let me know where your father-in-law is. Is he really angry? Whether I'm sorry or not, do you think he'll forgive me? It's like walking on eggshells. Perhaps it is not my duty to inform you, but I think you should kneel before him first. It's a gesture of humility, isn't it? What? Kneeling down? It's like you're asking me to surrender. What happens when the wife rebelled against her husband? Just kneel down. Oh, by the way, I don't know where he lives. It's like he's disappeared off the map. <laughs> Please help me contact my husband and ask where he is. It's like I'm searching for a needle in a haystack. That is not what I should do. Goodbye, Vanessa. I have many things to do, and I don't have time to waste in this nonsense conversation. Hey, wait. Please, Regan. You can't ignore me like that. It's like you're leaving me in a maze without a map. 
I went to the household registration office to get the marriage registration form. I know we had a fight before, Reagan. But I also know that I don't want to live another day without you. Will you forgive me and marry me again? Because life without you is like a broken pencil. Pointless. Huh? Don't make me laugh. Are you serious right now? It's good to get married after a divorce. I'm not mad at you for filing for divorce without my permission anymore. So let's get married again. After all, they say love is lovelier the second time around. Nope. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I'm not about to hand you the pen to rewrite a sequel. Don't say such cold words, Reagan. Do you still love me? Don't you? Because every moment without you feels like an eternity of despair. What? Are you out of mind? Bradley, this isn't some kind of romantic comedy where you can just sweep in and fix everything with a grand gesture. We just got divorced a few days ago. How is it possible for a 10-year relationship to disintegrate within such a short span of time? I refuse to believe our story doesn't have a few chapters left. You are such a fool. Every time something happens, you just scold me for no reason. Even gave me a divorce agreement. I'm sorry. Do you not know how miserable I was in those days? I felt like a ghost in my own life. I just wanted to tease you a little bit. I never imagined it would go this far. I guess I've always been playing the clown when I should have been the knight. Dad always listens to me whenever you leave me to return to your hometown. You don't even know how much Dad helped me. Finally, I could look out and wake up. I cannot bear the thought of having you in my life any longer. Your presence just brings me nothing but heartache and turmoil. And I have reached the end of my rope. If you really need a morning coffee so badly, make your own, you idiot. If you can't even make coffee, you just need to drink water for a lifetime. Because I'm done being your barista in a cafe of chaos. My ex-husband Bradley has chosen to live in the tranquility of the countryside with his mother. However, his mother lacks the knack for housework, something I had mastered during our time together. Bradley, on the other hand, struggles with financial matters, unlike his father, who had a knack for making money. This difference in skills often leads to heated arguments between them. Their refusal to apologize is slowly eroding their relationship. They often remind each other of this fact, but deep down, they both understand the immense pain that would come from severing their ties. This cycle of arguments and silent acknowledgments is a common occurrence in their household. Contrarily, my father-in-law finds solace in his solitude. He seems to enjoy the peace that comes with living alone. With his guidance and support, I managed to secure a full-time job. Currently, life is progressing smoothly and I'm content with how things are going. 